Hello everyone, this is going to be a quick video about the debug macro, so let's get started. Before I talk about the debug macro, I'll do a quick explanation and give an example first. If you want to skip those, you can use the timestamps in the video slider or the video description below. Now, first, what are macros? Macros in C refer to the definitions made by the defined directive. So if I go ahead and define the word true as one like this, this true would be called a macro. And you should know that when you use the word true in this file, all of those instances will be replaced by one before the file is sent to the compiler. So the compiler itself will never actually see the word true. They will have been already replaced by the one here. This is done by the preprocessor, which is a part of the compilation process. And again, it takes place before your code is compiled. I actually talked about this topic a little bit in my info about C language video, if you want to check that out. As another example, if I open my config.h file, you can see this defined term, which is called header guard. This is also a macro, and I talked about it in the aforementioned previous video. Or if I scroll down, you can see that I defined the frequency of my microcontroller here. This term is also a macro. Now, the preprocessor in C is very powerful. You can go down that rabbit hole yourself if you want, but I'll just explain the relevant parts for this video. Now, let me show you a relevant use case for these macros. Let's say you're trying to write a library, and you plan to use this library on a bunch of different microcontrollers in the future. There are multiple ways to write the same code and achieve the same functionality. Sometimes there is a single best way to write a code but more often you'll find yourself able to implement a functionality in multiple ways. Say that one implementation is faster, but it occupies more memory, and the other implementation is slower, but occupies less memory. And say that you want to implement both and have the ability to choose which one gets used. Let's say that I can implement this digit sum function in another way, like this. It just returns 10 no matter what's passed to it. This is obviously a stupid idea. It'll almost always return the wrong result. Well, turns out there aren't many different ways to implement this function, and the example itself isn't that important. If I build now, the process will fail, as these two functions have the same name. You can't do that in C. You can combat this by renaming the second function to digit sum2 or something. But then, whenever you want to change which function you want to use, you have to go and replace all function calls with this new name, and vice versa, which would be a nightmare. Another way would be to comment out the function you don't want to use each time, like this. Though, if your function is very long, this would also be a nightmare to do, and you can't easily get in there and modify your code either. But there is a better way to handle all of this, by utilizing the preprocessor. I'll go ahead and define an arbitrary macro called mode and assign it the value 1. Preprocessor in C also has its own if statements, so you can do something like this. As you can see, I'm checking if this mode macro is 1 or 0 using the if and else if statements. These are the syntax, and note that they all start with a hash symbol, which means they are preprocessor terms. You can look these up online, explaining them is out of the scope of this video. But essentially, this line means if mode is equal to 1. This line means else if mode is equal to 0. And this line terminates the if statements to form the code blocks. As you can see, the mode equals to 0 block is grayed out, since this if statement is false, and the preprocessor won't send this code to the compiler when building. If I build now, we don't get any warnings, and the compiler will use this function. And by simply changing the mode macro to zero, I can make the compiler use this code block instead. If I build, again, there are no problems. And the compiler will use this function instead. The grayed out block essentially doesn't exist for the compiler, since the preprocessor will remove it before passing this file onto the compiler. Now that I've explained the necessary information, we can talk about the debug macro. MPLAB and the compiler internally define some macros that you can make use of. You can find these macros in the MPLAB ID user's guide and the XC8 compiler user's guide respectively. The one we're interested in here is the double underscore debug macro. You can also see an example use case below. Just like how you can check if a macro is equal to a value like 0 or 1, 
You can also check whether a certain macro is defined or not. This is the syntax to check if the double underscore debug macro is defined. And this macro will only be defined internally by MPLAB if the project is built for debugging. I'll go ahead and change my example to check whether the debug macro is defined and put an else here to use the code block below if it isn't. If I build for production, as you can see, the debug macro isn't defined, so we're using the code block below. If I use the drop down menu here to build the project for debugging, as you can see, now the debug macro is defined, so we're using the code block above instead. So you see, you can write code that is specifically meant for debugging, that gets removed automatically when you're not debugging. You're also not limited to disabling functions here. This is just an example. You can use this feature practically anywhere. So you can do something like this. This way, each result will be increased by 10, but only if you're debugging. This can be a very powerful tool for certain applications. And don't forget that you have other macros internally defined by MPLAB and the compiler. You can again check them out if you're curious, the links for which I'll put in the video description below. And that's the end of the video and thank you for watching. If you liked the video, you can always leave a like and subscribe. It's always appreciated and I'll see you in the next video.